guys, I have a this story of this summer for me is uh, is something that when I get to tell it, you're not going to believe it. I don't think, and that's fine. I don't know how to like change that, but maybe you will. Maybe there will be enough um, accompanying documentation or whatever. Uh, some of the stuff, some of the stuff I have to tell is in places that may never be disclosable. Like, not that they just may never be disclosed; they just may never be disclosable for various reasons that go beyond me. But um, when I ultimately get to tell the tell you the story, I will. Uh, needless to say, a bunch has been said about me and a bunch of people have said that I have said stuff that I have never, ever uttered in my life. Uh, in fact, one of them I'll have to address right away. And, and this is this is frustrating for me is uh, Joshua Moon, the owner of Kiwi Farms. And um, how do I how do I do this best? How do I do this best? So Joshua Moon has filed a motion. Uh, he's he's desperately trying to get stuff related to my case, which th that doesn't surprise me or make me like that's that's what Josh is going to do, and that's fine, I guess. Whatever. Um, but Josh has routinely misrepresented things that I have said uh, in this ordeal, and. It's it's frustrating uh, because I I don't know. It's annoying when someone misquotes you. Um, it's more annoying when they put it in an affidavit that you've said something that I, I don't believe I have ever said. And um, so I had a conversation with Josh the other day, and he went to the forums, and he just said that I said stuff which I didn't I didn't say. It's it was very weird because I mean, Josh had the messages and I figured he'd just like, if he needed to say something about them, he'd just release them. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I have to do this in a very particular way because I don't, I want to show you guys like, what was said to Josh, because this is, I mean, this is important to my cases. I want to show you guys what was actually said to Josh, because uh, it's interesting. He, he calls me a liar all the time. He says I'm lying to him or gaslighting him or whatever. But then when he went to say what I said on the, on the forums, he, he just posted his own version of it. And I've noticed something about Josh is, is Either he paraphrases things incorrectly or he uses someone else's incorrect paraphrase as if it were true. And I think that's what's been going on with him and me. And so I'm just going to show you the uh, messages. So this starts on Sunday, uh, Saturday, August 3rd. Um, he's talk he was talking about the body cam footage in my case. And people want me to like sign this release order or they want me to sign a consent form for the body cam footage in my case, which uh, I'm, I'm certainly not going to do at this point in time. And I'm, I'm not sure that it it ever be appropriate, but here you go. And people can, they can make all sorts of arguments or whatever, but uh, that's fine. I'm not going to sit and argue with the internet about the propriety of that. You can call me whatever you want. It's, that's okay. But here's what I am going to do. I'm going to show you guys what I said to Josh because I think it's important. And I think it's really important to show you exactly what was said because what Josh said isn't true. So here we go. Uh, I hope you can read this. So this is um, Saturday, August 3rd, 9.53 p.m. I said, hey, retard. Discovery is under protective order in the case. Me releasing it is a violation of that order. It's in the document you already have on your site, Learn to Read, which is the, uh, the order that was leaked a long time ago, mentioned specifically that uh, discovery is under protective order in the case. 
Is it suggesting I should do anything to affirmatively move the needle on releasing it risks me violating a court order? Try reading. So again, really quickly, people on the farms or wherever want me to sign a consent form to release body cam footage that is part of both my criminal case and my civil case. But there's a protective order on discovery and the civil case has since been sealed as well. Releasing that or moving to release that or making any step for it risks me violating a court order. Now you may argue, well, that's not violating a court order. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, when the government has you by the balls and by the balls, I mean, your literal offspring, you don't do anything to risk violating a court order, but it gets farther than that. It goes farther than that. And we're going to get to that as well. Because this is an amazing thing that uh, Josh's myopia forces him to overlook the reality that people are in, in the thirst for more and more infos or whatever. So Josh, this is, I found this curious. He says, we're not asking you to release it. This is funny because Kiwi Farms is not a monolith. I've said it a million times, but apparently they are now acting in concert according to Josh. It's not me. He's, he's speaking on behalf of everyone now, I guess. We're not asking you to release it. We're asking you to grant the government permission to release it. There is no issue with you signing a letter of consent. Well, there are issues. We'll talk about them in a minute. Is your body cam footage is also discovering your criminal charge. Great. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If they're in both and one of them's under protective order, I'm certainly not fucking coming close to violating an order. Uh, it is part of the CHIPS case's discovery, but it's a part of the state's case in the criminal one. Okay, Josh, that's great. We, Lamau, because when did Kiwi Farms become we, Josh? When was that? When was Kiwi Farms a we? Does anybody, I've heard Josh say a million times that Kiwi Farms is just a website that people come to. It's not a collection of people acting in concert. Uh, it's it's anybody goes there and just gossips. But now it's we. That's very fun to me. Like, because it's such a different Josh than I remember. Then he has a question mark because he doesn't get that he's just said we a whole lot. And so I, I go on. No one is asking me anything, and you're specifically ignoring just how monstrous of a machine court is. I tell you there's a protective order on discovery in a case where the government is concerned about the safety of children, and you want me to sign a release to show Kiwi Farms information about where those children live so it can be paraded in front of a group of infamous hawkers. Now, that was my phone correcting gawkers to hawkers, but infamous gawkers. So you don't even listen to yourself and how absurd of a request that is. So now in quotes is a hypothetical, like a joke. It's a hyperbolic joke of what the judge would say to me if signing that consent form. Reminder that the state has your kids and they're like, well, we have concerns about parenting or whatever. And you're like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign a release form so that these weirdos on the internet could just see where my kids live. Like that sounds good. Right? Right? Right, fellow parents? <laughs> just, just go around. I want you all to go around to any parents, you know, and be like, hey, you have kids. Would you sign a release form to let the internet, like people on a website called Kiwi Farms, uh, see your kids' bedrooms? Like, would you just sign a release form for that? Well, I mean, it was a police action, so you should sign a release form for that, right? That would be an insane proposition to most people, I would think, but maybe not to Josh. Like, I guess he doesn't, he doesn't think that way. And that's fine. Like, again, myopia. But so here's the quote that from my hypothetical judge, Mr. Ricada, did you sign a release authorizing the state to share body cam footage with the layout of the home where your children sleep with an anonymous web, uh, web board that I'm reading has driven people to suicide through ridicule? Now, I've said over and over, I don't think Kiwi Farms is responsible for the suicides, but that's the news bite that an uninformed judge would be like looking into because it comes up every time. Only in every case is Kiwi Farms accused of having people commit suicide. I've defended this over and over and over again, so please don't come at me with your gayness. But that's what's going to be the mantra because it's the mantra every time it comes up. So then 
Why, Mr. Kata, did you think sharing that information was a positive step for the safety of your children? And then, of course, here's my response. I'm sorry, Your Honor. An illustrated dog who fled the U.S. because of reasons and his army of lolly avatars who say the N-word a lot asked me to. Uh, the absurdity, the absurdity of a parent signing a consent form for people to get more information about their children and give it to the Kiwi Farms people is like, they, they don't even they don't even recognize like how that looks and again under normal circumstances that looks insane but when the state is looking at you going we need to make sure you're a fit parent and and before we can return your kids be like hold on let me sign this release form here we want, i want to see i want these other people to look at my house first and and get the layout of it down and you know see that stuff that'd be that'd be good right like that'd be that'd be a responsible parenting to no. No, it never would. But I'm just trying to help him out here. So then I said, uh, Josh, sometimes your quest to make other people look retarded makes you unable to see how retarded you are. This isn't a joke for me. And despite your gaggle of happy faggots, super good deductive reasoning, they've got it wrong. That's why my kids will be home soon. Now, granted, I said this on the third. Um, I was under the impression that my kids would be coming back on the 11th. But instead, they came back on the 7th. Now, a lot of people on the farms, et cetera, have said that my kids were like never coming back or be an extremely long time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now that they're coming back. They're like, oh, we always said they'd come back. Well, yeah, sure. That's, that's fine. It, it, you guys had no way to know. I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you guys that you had no way to know. And I tried to explain the Minnesota law that specifically said why you wouldn't be able to know and that it wasn't even your fault. I'm like, yeah, these long-term case plans or whatever that you, you see, those are not actually dictating the flow of the case. They're required by statute as parallel planning to what's going on. But there's other shit going on that you guys don't know about, and I, I can't tell you. No one else can know. So when you saw these people like commenting, oh, this is what's actually happening, Nick's a liar. No, I, I really I was just telling you exactly what was happening, but I couldn't give you details about negotiations that were going on, about everything working on the parallel track that you don't get to know about. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I tried. I tried to tell you, but okay. So anyway, I knew when my kids were coming home because I'm the one who's been doing it. A lot of these people out there still think that uh, Lady Raggetts and I were not submitting to drug tests or that we had some way figured out how to plan the drug tests on our own or something. No, none of that's true. We've been complying with drug tests ever since the court asked us to do drug tests. The moment the court said, I need you to do drug tests, we're like, all right, cool. Now, we didn't do a whole shitload of drug tests beforehand. You know why? Because they didn't ask us to. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, people are making big deals out of stuff that they've made up in their minds. And when I try and correct it and say, no, actually, we've been completely clean on all of our drug tests. <laughs> They're like, the, the first drug test I submitted, yes, I tested positive for alcohol. Uh, that's because I wasn't ordered to not drink alcohol yet. That, that's it. Then on the uh, 7th of June, the judge said, uh, no, no controlled substances, including alcohol. Although that's not in my written order. Played it safe. Uh, no controlled substances, including alcohol, and you submit to random testing. We're like, all right, cool. Of course. There you go. Done. Our first drug test was voluntary. We brought it to court because we had a hearing. Anyway, long story short, that's, uh, that's how that went. But people still believe that there's a different story out there. And it's like, no, no, no. Nick must not be doing this. Nick must not be doing this. Nick must not. Guys, come on. Like, I, I know that this is the internet and everything's fucking ridiculous, but it's not that ridiculous. Uh, some people are. And some people get like liar tattooed on their cheekbone or whatever, which I thought was bold. But some people on the internet do have like real lives that they get a little over sensationalized, which I've told you guys a lot. A lot of my life is way over sensationalized. And it's funny for a while until it's not, until it has real world impact. And this has had real world impact and the jokes had to stop. But getting back to this, this thing, 
I knew my kids would be coming home soon. I knew actually the exact date. And again, someday I'll get to tell the story of how this, how this played out because how it played out should terrify you. Yeah, I know. You're not me. It should terrify you. Because in this county, my case went fast. That should terrify you. That this was fast. Considering the absolute dearth of evidence and accusations that they had. I know the, the internet has made a ton of accusations. Guys, the county doesn't accuse me of any of the stuff that you do. Which is why the kids are back home. So in light of this, this went fast. That should bother you. That should, that should worry you to your core if you're a parent. All right, here we go. Don't worry, there's more of this this conversation coming. I'm not going to just cut it off here. And I'll make sure and include this so that you know I'm not leaving something out. Uh, consenting to the release of that footage would be one of the most irresponsible things a parent could do. The fact that you don't see that should indicate that you are terminally... Dun, 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 dun. Just a second. Just a second. Here. Uh, there's a new one here. All right. Fact that you don't see that should indicate that you're terminally connected to the internet and disconnected from reality. Peace. Which people like try to psychoanalyze peace. Guys, I've used peace as a send off forever. So then Josh responds to me an hour later and he's like, he said, peace. Why did he respond? I'm like, Josh, you send a message back. I, I, I returned your message anyway. Uh, so he says, then have April consent. So like, instead of me consenting, I'm supposed to have someone else consent by proxy to get around. Listen to what Josh is suggesting. I'm saying, Hey, Josh, me doing this would violate like a court order. He says, have someone else do it by proxy. That won't violate the order. Josh, listen to yourself, man. Homie, listen to yourself. I don't want to violate a court order. So you're suggesting I have someone else do it for me? That doesn't make it okay to do. <laughs> like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have... Because I have control over her, apparently. Like, what should I, should I like use my puppet strings or should I intimidate her? Like, what, what is your proposition here? You just, just have her do it. <laughs> then it's not you. Fucking insane. But okay. No, Josh, very reasonable. Then have April consent. You are the one who said the footage would exonerate you. I didn't actually say the footage would exonerate me. I believe it's a little fuzzy. I believe I said that there are things in the footage that may help my case. They may actually be things that break the case. I don't know, especially at the time I had said it, I had not seen the footage. I still haven't seen all of the footage. There's a shitload of it. But don't, this is one of those things where Josh takes something I said and he paraphrases it into a direct statement or accusation or whatever but it isn't true. And it's the only reason I'm showing these messages is because he's done this multiple times now. And then people believe him and they say that he's credible and I'm not. Well, I'm showing you the messages because the credibility here is critical. Josh has put in an affidavit that I have said things about the search of my house that I haven't said. He put it in an affidavit to the court trying to convince the court of something, but I didn't say those things. I think it was either him reading someone else's misinterpretation or he just made a mistake. I don't think it's malicious, to be very clear. 
I don't think Josh is malicious in any of this. I think he's myopic. I think he's thirsty for the information. And that overrides basic reasoning. But I don't think he's maliciously doing it. But here we go. He says, you are the one who petitioned the court to seal discovery. Not true. Actually, I didn't petition the court to seal discovery. The protective order on discovery in my uh, civil case was proposed, guess what, by the county attorney. And my lawyer and Lady Rackets' lawyer independently agreed to it. It's in the transcript on your site. If you just read it, it's right there. They did it in court. And it's also in the order. So again, the you normally would have no way of knowing this. Now you actually have a way of knowing this. You just didn't take the time to know it, which is fine, except you're now you're accusing me of doing this stuff. No. No. Anyway, insinuating everyone you don't like is a pedophile is an ugly and ineffective tactic. Well, Josh, funny thing. I didn't insinuate anybody that I'm not liking is a pedophile here. But Josh does this all the time. Go through the list of people that Josh used to like and who he doesn't like now and look at how many of them he has called a pedophile. It's one of the most common words in his dictionary. This is an amazing case of projection from Josh. But notice in this conversation, I didn't call anyone a pedophile. Josh did. Josh called somebody pedophiles here, tried to make me do it, but I didn't do it. I said army of lolly avatars. Yeah, but I didn't call them pedophiles, Josh. You just have a bunch. There's just a bunch of lolly avatars. I also said you were an illustrated dog. Like... It, it was just a, is a pithy joke. Get over it. But anyways, insinuating everyone you don't like is a pedophile is an ugly and ineffective tactic. Well, Josh, maybe you should have a helping of that sandwich. Uh, he says, I'll remind you, it was your cocaine and your child testing positive for cocaine who put you in this situation. Those are Joshua Moon's words. I haven't made any comment about this. I'm only reading them for completeness. And I'm not going to make any comment about that now. I have a pending criminal matter. Uh, he says, I and my forum do not share responsibility. It's my forum. It's mine. <laughs> Josh speaking on behalf of the forums again. Well, that's just rich. It's good. Josh, I'm glad you're finally coming around to this because for years you denied all of this. Like you, you were not acting on behalf of the forum. You like you're acting on behalf of you and the people do it themselves, but I guess it's collective now. So then um, I said, you're the king of insinuating people are pedophiles. I didn't insinuate anything. I said, are you having a retard action? Because I said, lolly avatars. I said, also like normal, you parap your paraphrase of what I said is not precise. I said, peace, Josh. I hope you and your pedophiles have a good day. Josh called them pedophiles. I didn't. But I'll go with the moniker. That's, that's on him. So then he says, you are not as smart as you think you are. And I said, oh, no. That's fine. I hope I'm not as smart as I think I am. Uh, so then, uh, today at 1.03 p.m., I said, by the way, very curious where you think I alleged police planted anything. And this is getting into the meat of the matter because I noticed that Josh said that I said this, but I, I didn't say that. Actually have specifically avoided saying that. I haven't said it at all. When people insinuated that I meant it, I said, I didn't say that. I have clearly not, I've specifically not said this. If I'm wrong, please, somebody let me know. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I've never actually said this. And I haven't seen anybody find it yet. I said, you put it in a motion supported by affidavit. Are you sure? You didn't just paraphrase something incorrectly and assume what I meant. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Or maybe you misread a retarded summary from a forum post. Who knows? 
So Josh said, you literally said that Alicia Sweep by name lied under oath. Yes. Yes, I did. And that did happen. It was not during the search, however. But Alicia Sweep did lie under oath. In fact, when we left the court hearing, I walked right up to her and I said, you lied under oath and you know it. I walked right up to her. I pointed at her. I said it to her face. I will say it every single day. Alicia Sweep lied under oath in Candy, Ohio County. 100% she did that. I also said, the problem with all of this is that when there is no other witness than you and the government agent, you have two options. You have to live with the lie because no, no one's punishing her. Or you have to testify. And testifying to counter the lie one, does two things. One, it pits your credibility against the government worker. Now, the government worker who works with the CPS investigator all the time, or the, the judge who works with the CPS investigator all the time and doesn't know you at all, where do you think that credibility default is going to go? Towards the, towards the CPS investigator. So I would have to go take the stand and say, no, Alicia Sleep lied about this thing that didn't happen. And then I would similarly be opening myself up to cross-examination when I have a pending criminal matter. You just have to eat shit sometimes. I, I mentioned this with less specificity, but that's the way the system works. Sometimes you don't have the opportunity to call out a lie. Lies go by in court all day. I pray you're never in a position where those lies impact your children. I really do. Because it fucking sucks, man. You're powerless. You have to sit there. You, By the way, you can't, like your lawyer can't object. She lied. How? How do you show they lied? Well, you either have to get a witness up there or you have to have a recording. The recording has to be introduced by a witness. They have to be cross-examined. Sometimes you just have to eat shit. Anyway, so here we go. 100%. Uh, so here we go. He says, if you want to point out a specific paragraph in the affidavit you have an issue with, you can, but you're very obvious about what you're doing. <laughs> obvious. Uh, Josh, I, I don't know where you think I said this, but I didn't say it. And he, he's done this before to me. Josh will do this. When I talk to him, he'll say, what do you want me to redact or uh, retract or change or make a statement on? I say, Josh, I don't want you to make a statement about anything. I don't want you to delete anything. I don't want you to censor anything. And then he'll say, Nick tried to get me to censor something or Nick tried to get me to change something. No, literally never done that. It's amazing how many times he has personally accused me of that when I do something like this. I'm saying, dude, you're saying something that's not true. Like, well, what do you want me to change it? No, I'm just letting you know it's not right. That's literally it. Do whatever the fuck you want with it. So here he goes. Uh, everything I've said in the affidavit was true to the best of my knowledge and ability. Yeah, that's fine. But your knowledge and ability are lacking. Sorry, Josh. So then uh, we go back to me responding to his Alicia Sweet thing. I said, she did. That was not during the warrant execution. It wasn't. It was after. He said, I'm just trying to tell you that I have not alleged the police planted anything, which I have not. You misunderstood or read someone's summary who misunderstood. All right, give me a second. We'll go on. Sorry to do this this way. It's, it's the only way. Uh, it's the only way to fucking do this. I... When you're accused of being dishonest and the person accusing you incorrectly states what you said, it gets a little frustrating. Here we go. I, I said, you misunderstood or read someone's summary who misunderstood. I may have suggested multiple times over the years that no one should consent to a search because you don't know if police will even inadvertently place something. So, but I've made no public accusations regarding the planting of evidence. So maybe someone misinterpreted my explanation that police have to prove that I possessed what they alleged and there are facts which make this issue complicated. There are. I said, Alicia Sweep lied, stating that I prevented her from accessing the bedroom and closing the door. That was a lie under oath. That was a lie under oath. 
A CPS worker named Alicia Sweep in Candy, Ohio County, Minnesota, lied under oath in the case against me. There's no way around it. That happened. As I stated, the downside of the system is that there was no way to counter the lie without testifying. Testifying would have been a bad move at the time. Very true. Very true. So Josh responds, look, mate. It's Australian now, apparently. Uh, you're a pathological liar. Oh, Josh. And you are blatantly engaged in manipulation against everyone you talk to at all times for no apparent or good reason possible. And let me just, let me just go ahead and say this. If someone is accused of always manipulating people for no reason, I'll humbly suggest they're not actually manipulating people. I mean, you can believe whatever you want. I'm not here to change that. I, I can't. I can't. Im I can't manipulate you into believing me. If I could, I'd be way richer. All right? Here's the crazy thing. Josh can never figure out what the manipulation is. It's just that what I tell him doesn't fit his story up here. If it doesn't fit Josh's story up here, he can't fathom how it happens. But Josh is retarded. I love him. He's a lovable retard, but he is. His life is not a normal person's life, and that is fine. But it makes him have trouble identifying with other people in real situations over and over and over. And that's shown through. Every, it's actually kind of a joke on the forum itself. He just doesn't get it. Because he doesn't live in the world that other people do. He lives in a world of nastiness, of crazy, insane people, of, of antics that go beyond the normal bounds of human comedy. He doesn't live like, uh, I mean, he doesn't even live like me. And my, I'm ridiculous. His is more so. But all right. He goes, uh, yeah, apparently manipulating everyone all the time. Nothing you tell me will ever be taken at face value. And in this instance, it's just another obvious lie that makes me roll my eyes. Notice what Josh hasn't done. He has not found, he has not found the instance where I have said what he says I said. Uh, he says, I know you think it's very, very clever to continuously imply things so you can backtrack what you said immediately. Like that time you were talking to some blonde woman and basically said the government plants evidence all the time. The government plants evidence all the time. They do. It's news story after news story after news story. We find it over and over and over. And he says, uh, when she directly asked to confirm if you were saying that happened in your case, which was an obvious follow-up because it was plain that you were implying that I wasn't. I was simply saying why you don't consent to searches ever. He says, you backtracked it immediately. I said, I didn't say that. I've never said that because I didn't and have never said that. It's amazing. He's like, you told the truth. Yes, Josh. He's like, see, so your truth was a lie because you meant it to be. No, Josh, you needed it to be. But I never said that. That's the whole point of all of this. He says, uh, you do this continuously. You insinuate through gritted teeth. Oh, shit, I didn't get the more. I'll read it to you. The more says, I mean, maybe I'm hiding something. You insinuate through gritted teeth that XYZ happened, and it was a knowingly malicious and deliberate effort by a state actor to accomplish some evil deed at your expense. Then when pressed, you look away from the camera and say, well, I didn't say that. Except I don't do that. It's, again, it's amazing because for his thing to be right, his premise is that requires me to do the thing that he needs me to do. It's very circular. I have to be making the implication to then deny the implication. But I'm denying the implication because I didn't make it. So anyway. Uh, he says, I'm not one of your children. You can't lie to me. Oh, dude, my children are way better lie detectors than you are, Josh. He said, Josh, the hardest thing for you to realize one day is that I don't. So please go back and find me actually accusing the police or planting anything in my case. Now, Josh ran to the forums again right after I sent him this. And he said, Nick dared me 
dared me to do it. No, <laughs> I didn't dare you to do anything. Jesus Christ, man. So please go find it. You say, he says in his affidavit, sworn under oath, to be truthful, that I said this, but I didn't say it. Like, please go find it. He says, I will. I intend to compile a list of every time that you implied that someone from the police department did something wrong to you. <laughs> Knock yourself out, I guess. You've been doing it since your first stream out of jail. I'm going to have to do this anyways because it's the only way to justify getting the body cam footage released without your consent and you've got April locked down. Yes, shackled to the floor, unable to move. She's not even she's not even a real person. She has no will, Josh. And don't even try that. You've been lying about who you were and what you stand for since the first time you cut on a fucking camera. I think you meant put on? Got on? I'm not sure. Look, my phone fucks up all the time. I'm not criticizing him. I said, nope, other people project onto me. That's not my fault. That being said, I wish you well in your endeavors in regards to finding those accusations. It's true. I wish him well. I wish him well. So here we go. Let's get the, the rest of this shit. Oh, boy. I know this is wild fun, guys. This is going to get very meta here because there's screenshots in this one. I know this is wild fun. Um, and we'll get on with the, the case update uh, when we're done with this Josh conversation. We will. So here we go. So finish the accusations. There's only one, one screenshot that matters because the other two are you've already seen. It's just a repeat of the earlier conversation. We'll skip those in a second. He says, thanks. And he said, Josh, are you lying intentionally or just chronically imprecise? And then I screenshotted his post. He says, King Baldo has again reached out. King Baldo, God, I wish. Through a system of ropes and pulleys to declare the following. Here's what he paraphrased into. He has never said the police did anything wrong during the execution of the search warrant. That's actually not what I said. And that's not true. I believe I've said they've made mistakes. I haven't said anything about what they are. But I did not say they haven't done uh, that they did nothing wrong. I just said they didn't. I'd never said they planted evidence. This is what Josh has done. He has shifted the language and moved the goalposts to make his lies version into a form of truth. Because he he can't be. He had all these messages. He had them. But his paraphrase is imprecise. And it's really important because, again, Josh put under oath a swearing that it was true and correct, that I said a thing that I haven't said. He did that through his lawyer. I didn't do that to him. I sent him a message. But he did this. And then when I say, hey, John, I didn't say that. Now he's like, he's changing it. And he's changing the language that he used. It's amazing. So he goes, uh, search warrant on his premises and both dares me and wishes me luck in finding evidence to the contrary to support a petition to the Candy Eye County Sheriff's Department. I said, this is not what I said. And I also didn't dare him. I did wish him luck. Or I think I, I wished him well. I wished him well. I didn't even wish him luck. Very imprecise, Josh. How embarrassing. All right, here we go. Let's get to the next one. I'm going to skip the screen grabs. There's, this is the last one, okay? So we can, we can stop the suffering soon. Here we go. Guess I'll get the, I got to get the whole thing just so people know I'm not like grabbing some other fucking conversation or something weird. Should I get accused of these days? So here's the screenshots again. Back to where we were. He says, can you give me a quote then? What, like what, you're, are you a newspaper? You're going to publish a quote? I said, I also never dared you to do anything. Then he puts a screenshot, please go back and find me actually accusing the police of planting anything in my case. I said, I'm literally asking. I'm not taunting or daring you. I know what I didn't say. If I messed up somewhere and alleged that, I would want to know. We both have an interest in that allegation. 
So look, man, I've literally only ever contacted you for your own information. You've suggested multiple times that I'm demanding a retraction or correction. I always tell you no. Trying to convince someone else to correct the record for an internet audience is nonsensical. So there you go. Joshua Moon. I don't like doing that. I really don't. But dude. The guy just fucking lied about what I said. He lied about what I said in his affidavit that he filed with the court. And then when I'm like, hey, dude, I didn't say that. He's like, ha you did. It's like, where? Sorry. I don't know. I don't know what else to do, man. It fucking sucks. But hey, this is the this is the nature. This is this is how Josh has chosen to do this for years, by the way. Conversations like that are why Josh has been mad at me. Because when he would say something and be like, hey man, that's that's actually not right. He goes, Do you want me to correct it? And I'd say, No. Do you want me to kick someone off the forums? No. Well, who's violating the rules? Josh, I don't do that. Like, I'm, I'm not asking you to do anything. And then he'd go on the forums and say, oh, man, Nick's asking me to censor stuff for sweep. No, N never have I asked Josh to take anything off the forums. I've never asked him to issue a retraction. I've never asked him to correct a statement. Not once. Every time he said that, that was Josh lying or misunderstanding. I'll even give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's just literally retarded. But it sucks because that's uh, that's who Josh has become. It's his own myopia that does it. That myopia is the same thing that fuels cops and it's the same thing that fuels local government workers. That's, that is what gets people in the system and keeps people in the system. That myopia is what takes away rights. Josh has a story in his head about what must be and facts that don't fit his story get ignored. Any little thing that comes close to his story gets overemphasized. It's confirmation bias. Confirmation bias runs the court system in the United States. The criminal justice system has some protections built into it. They do. The family court system does not. The family court system has a reduced ability to protect your rights. It's a civil case. So when you exercise your Fifth Amendment rights, the court is permitted to draw a negative inference where in a criminal case, they can't. That's one of the very basic ones. They get to draw negative inferences from you protecting yourself from criminal prosecution. Sucks. But here's the thing. When a worker whose job it is to determine the safety of children, for example, gets an idea in their head, not facts, but an idea in their head that there's a dangerous situation or environment or person, and they genuinely even want to protect children, they may be protecting them from a fantasy. The problem is trying to convince them that their fantasy is wrong because when you present them with evidence that their fantasy is wrong, they literally just ignore it. Or as happened to us, throw a tantrum because the evidence did not say what their fantasy said. And when we presented it to them, they were angry. Not at us. They just thought the evidence had to be fake. It had to be something else. It had to not be real because their story up here mattered more than the story that was actually in front of them. That's what myopia does. That's what that single-mindedness does. When you're unwilling to consider facts that are contrary to your fantasy, 
You become unreliable to yourself. I'm sure I have done this a million times. It's a natural human thing. We're supposed to guard against it. The internet breeds circles where the checks on that go away quickly. And tons of people have been on the receiving end of it. Thank God most of them don't have their families impacted. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.